Papers has a separate workflow for organizing your books and book chapters. The workflow is incredibly flexible and highly customizable to your preferences. This video aims to show you some of the different ways you can create books and book chapters in Papers using some examples. Our first example is the simplest one. We will drag and drop two books into Papers where all chapters are contained within one complete PDF. Once imported into Papers, one of the ways we can designate both our books is by dragging and dropping them into the Books section. We can then further refine the type of book the files are. As you can see, we can do this for both files simultaneously. Supplements are also available in Books, but in addition we can designate additional files as being separate chapters. Soon you'll see how this comes in handy to make a collection of chapters into one book. For example, we can import an additional file we want to save together with our book as a separate chapter. You can do the same for supplements, and it's really up to your preferences how you organize any potential supplemental files. The big difference between supplemental files and chapters is that chapters receive their own entry in your library, whereas supplements are truly kept just with the file they are attached to and are not visible as separate entities in your library list. Once the file is added as a chapter, you will see it in the file list, and under source you will see the book title listed. You can navigate to the chapter individually or see it from the book file as well. Now we'll manually create a book file and add book chapters from a folder. One of the chapters is a Word document while the others are PDFs. This illustrates you can add many different file types as chapters within the same book. To create an entry for a book from scratch, click on File, then New, and select Book. You can now enter the book title and other metadata. As you can see, you can also further specify the type of book this is from this drop-down menu. One way of adding chapters to this book is to drag and drop them directly into the book entry file. Another way of adding a chapter is by using this button to add a chapter file, which you can then add a document and metadata to. Here you can drop the chapter document file into the inspector window to attach it to this chapter entry. You can open the file in a new tab directly from the book's inspector window. By dragging and dropping, you can also add multiple chapters simultaneously. If you would like to remove a chapter, select it and click on this button. Papers asks whether you are sure you want to delete the file. Now let's have some fun. Books can be used for a variety of purposes, and I'll illustrate some examples. Aside from some obvious situations where different chapters fit together as a book, you might want to create book files for other collections you have. For example, I might want to pull together different files and create a book to keep a collection of PDFs together as chapters instead of creating a smart collection. In this case, I am creating a book with recipes. For me, this workflow is perfect if I want to keep a relatively small number of related documents together without creating an entirely new collection or smart collection. First, I can create a chapter. Keep in mind dragging and dropping directly into your book entry also creates chapters. Now I can drag the recipe file into the chapter file to complete it. Metadata such as the chapter title can easily be changed. For chapter 2, I will just do a direct drag and drop to illustrate how simple this option is. You can also add chapters that are already in your papers library. First we will drag and drop these last two recipes directly into papers, convert them to book chapters independently, and then add them to this book entry. To add chapters already in your library to an existing book, first select the book, then click and drag each chapter into the book entry. The chapters will not be highlighted, but you will see that they are being added to your book. Let's create another book using another set of PDFs. I'm using files that in my case are not work related, but for anyone in a creative profession these might very well be work files, or like me you can organize both work and hobby related files and papers. Although I can create a book from the file menu, I can also use an alternate method of creating a book. I want to keep one of the PDFs as the book entry and I will add a second PDF as an additional chapter. Now I'll add the sewing instructions as a chapter instead of a supplement because I still want it to be a separate file in my papers library. Clicking on the magnifying glass next to the chapters makes papers toggle between a chapter file and the book file itself. You can see that moving between the two makes papers jump between your chapter and book file in your chapter list, and using preview you can preview each PDF independently. 
The last book we'll create will be a doctoral thesis. We will quickly go through the steps because they're the same regardless of the type of book you're creating. Instead of just selecting book, we'll select thesis. In the inspector, we will now be able to further specify whether it's an undergraduate, master's, or doctoral thesis. The inspector window includes other specialized fields for information such as your university, advisors, and committee members. From my hard drive, I'll drag and drop an introduction I have written as my first chapter. Next, I'll show how I can add a published article I have authored as a second chapter. I might do this as a placeholder because I'll be using the same data and topic to finally write my second chapter, or depending on the university's policies, a published article could actually constitute a chapter. As you keep adding chapters, your thesis continues to grow. Now you know more about the book chapter workflow, and hopefully these examples have inspired you to use chapters in creative ways as well. Enjoy using papers.